Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the, uh, the piston and cylinder assemblies on our front brakes on a 2003 Honda Rancher 350. Pretty simple to do. Let me just lift it up in the air, get that front right tire off, and I'll show you how to get it done. Alright guys, this is going to be a skill level 2. Let me go over some of the tools that we're going to need to get this done. You're going to need a 3 8 and a quarter inch ratchet. For our sockets, you're going to need a 27, a 17, a 10, and an 8. Just a regular old flat blade screwdriver, good pair of needle nose pliers, a 10 and a 12 wrench, but the one you're going to need to probably go to the store and get is what they call a line wrench. You're going to need it to take off that uh, compression bolt that's on your uh, brake lines. Other than that, just need a uh, wire brush, soft blow hammer, good breaker bar, and a torque wrench. Now, if you would, reference our parts diagrams. This is going to give you an exploded view of how everything comes apart, and more importantly, how it goes back together. Plus, it has all the part numbers that you're going to need to get this done. So, once you have your tools and your parts together, we can go head over to the machine and I'll show you how to get it done. All right, so we've got to lift it up in the air. We've got the front tire off. The first thing we need to do is go and get this cotter pin out, try to get it as straight as possible then take off this castle nut, and then the, uh, the brake drum assembly can come off. All right, I've pulled this little uh, plug here, and what that does, it opens up, if you've got the, uh, the hub in the right area, is the, uh, the piston that's in there. There's actually two of them. What we're going to do is bring those back in, and that should give us enough room to pull the, uh, the drum off. And I'll show you what I'm talking about once we get it removed. We're going to ratchet these back. To their closed position and the other one's down here. All right, she is off and that will expose all the working pieces on the inside. All right, as you can tell, I mean, we've already been in this before in a previous video, so the brake shoes are actually new. These are what we're after and believe it or not, there's actually there's four of these and they're all a different part number. So you need to make sure that you get the correct part numbers when you do order. But to get to them, let's go ahead and get these uh, retention pins out of the way. Right, now you can just lift up out of these two little slots and then bring off the springs with the brake shoes themselves. And you want to take note of how all this went together because that's exactly the way you want it to go back on. The spring is actually on this side going back and then the other springs down here going front. I said there was four different types, which is true, but it'll make it a little bit easier because they actually have them stamped right and left. Now you notice that both of these have an R on them and I'm on the right side of the machine, so they end up going over here. Now the biggest difference in between these two is this one actually has a bleeder valve on it. And the bleeder valve is the one that goes back here. So. Let's start disconnecting our uh, hydraulic lines on the back side. Just a 12 millimeter. Make sure you've got a pan under it. Because brake fluid is uh, pretty poisonous and I hate for your kids or any type of small pets to get into it. Anyway, it's getting real close to pinching that line, that breather line. So let's go ahead and slide it up and out of the way. As usual with a banjo bolt, there is a, a crush washer on either side, so make sure you don't lose those. Now there's a line that goes from uh, one to the other. We just need to take it off. It's much less likely that you'll end up stripping it if you have a wrench like this. And once you've got it broken loose, just to move things along a little bit quicker, you can use a regular 10 millimeter to finish taking it off. All right, let's reach over and get the other side. You want to get to it, I'm going to have to go ahead and pull the, the bleeder valve out so I've got room to get my wrench in there. Now we can go ahead and break that other one loose. Alright, so we've got our crossover pipe out. Now we can unbolt them from that back plane. 
a little tap, and out she goes. Now we can grab our new one. You need to apply sealant, whatever it might be, RTV. I'm using actually crankcase sealant all the way around this area, all the way around these two uh, points here, around that vent, and then around that bolt. Once you've got that done, we can go ahead and pop it back in. We'll place that 10 millimeter down at the bottom. Let's go ahead and get that 12 millimeter on back up top. Now you notice that I installed this with the plug still in. I would recommend doing that because you don't want to get any type of dirt into the system because it would uh, wreak havoc on it. Now we just need to do the same thing on the back side. Why would you really need to replace one of these? Well, there's a couple of reasons. What typically happens is uh, we get a lot of water into this and then it just rusts all this up to where you can't even adjust it anymore. The other thing that happens is if you don't bleed your uh, braking system often enough, it'll actually it'll bring water into the system because brake fluid is actually hygroscopic. That means it attracts water. Water gets into the system, works its way down to these little cylinders with the little pistons in there, starts to rust, seizes them up, and then they don't operate anymore. Now Honda makes a rebuild kit for these. I mean, uh, for the cost versus the uh, amount of effort it would take for me to rebuild these little guys, it was easier just to replace it. Now we can take out those little plugs but remember on that back side where we've got access to the, uh, the crossover pipe, we need to go ahead and take out the bleed screw all the way. All right, just lay that to the side for a second. Now we can go ahead and get in our crossover tube. Right, to get things to go a little bit quicker, just use your regular 10 millimeter wrench just to get it snug. And then we'll come back and actually tighten it down with this one right here, which actually grabs more of the bolt and reduces the chances that you'll uh, strip it or round it off. Now, just need to repeat on the back side. And go ahead and reinstall our leader screw. Let's get on our main line coming from the, uh, the master cylinder. One of the most important parts that you need to do while you're going through this whole procedure is to try to get it as clean as possible because the, uh, the less dirt and brake dust and whatnot that we have inside of here, the better. So do take your time and truly get it as clean as you can before you put it back together. All right, now we can go ahead and uh, reinstall our brake shoes. There we go. All right, now, we can go ahead and get our retention pins in. Have our spring clip, get it lined up, push, and then turn. Go ahead and do the bottom. There we are. Before you try to put the, uh, the drum back on, make sure that you've got grease all the way around in these two cavities. And then also make sure you've got your shoes lined up the best you can. We'll use the back as kind of a reference to see if you're equal distant from side to side on the, uh, the stub axle. Let's go ahead and grease it, especially in this area right here where there's kind of an indentation. Make sure you've got some in there. And then also on the end where that little O-ring is. Now we can go ahead and get our castle nut on, and then also torque down to 58 foot-pounds. Let's go ahead and get our cotter pin in. When you install these, you've got two different lengths. What I usually do is have the long end toward the outside. That way it bends over the front, and we can bend on the inside. All right, guys, this pretty much wraps up how you get these things changed out. Now, listen, the other side is pretty much a mirror image of what I just did. And to complete the project, you're going to need to bleed the brakes. I mean, if you would, reference our brake bleed video for the front of this machine, and I can show you how to do that. And if there's any fine adjustment to be done as far as setting the pull on the brake lever itself, once you get it bled, why don't you reference our uh, brake shoe replacement on this particular unit, and I'll show you how to get it adjusted. 
Well, listen, if you need any of the parts that we use to do this, why don't you come over to Parkzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.